So guys, this isn't no ordinary playthrough. This is just gonna be me regaling you with the tale of the times I used to work at Toys R Us. So, I, I've had quite a few jobs. These are top 10 times worked at Toys R Us. Now, number one. This was kind of a long time ago at the Toys R Us job, which no one should ever have. Toys R Us was a great place to go when you're not working there. I had this dude called Tim. He was just crazy. He yelled at me like, what are you doing? You're supposed to put the boxes oblonged on the sides. And I said, that would be fucking impossible, Tom. So he was just a fucking douchebag to me. Now, now let's get to, to the stories everyone's been waiting for. The story, that, that was just a story within a story. This is still number one. Sorry. Sorry to be so mixed up. But story within a story, nonetheless. Story of the kid and his mother at Toys R Us. Now, this is kind of a somewhat scary story to some. So this kid was telling me, I can't find my mommy. Could you please help me, mister? And naturally, I said, yes. Oh, God. This is kind of hard to do. I'm trying to come up with a place anyway since I died. So the kid wanted me to help him find his mother. So I did, of course. So his mother, I was just looking around, and he said, Hey, there's my mommy. And I see this woman dressed up in black with an oblong-shaped face and tears with red and black fluid coming out. And she says to me, Would you like to play with us? In the weirdest, raspiest voice ever. And I was just like, Holy shit, no thank you. And so... Um, naturally, she started following me around the toy store. But once I, I said, please, don't, don't hurt me. And her little boy said, Mommy, I want this teddy bear. And I said, you can have it. And then the woman said, but we don't have money. And I said, I'll pay for it. And she left. And the teddy bear was gone. But get this, the next day. On the floor, it was written, there was written in some type of red fluid, and it said, sorry, from little man, because that's what I called him. Since that day, I always chose to work a shift with somebody I knew. N number two. Well, I, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do this, like, I would just draw a picture like this for number two. Okay, this is another scary story from freaking, from, from the freaking um, Toys R Us. So, I was walking to get to the store when this dude nearly ran me, started following me with his, with his freaking truck. And I just thought he was looking for a parking space. So I made a left turn and then he passed millions of parking spaces. I mean, literally, the Toys R Us lot was empty at this time. So I was wondering, what was he looking at? What was he looking for? And so I keep turning. I keep going around corners and, and fucking bullshit. But the, but the car just kept following me. And then the car started to speed up and it was honking. And all of a sudden... I had to run. I was like running and I almost got hit by the car, but I went underneath it because I couldn't go anywhere. So I just laid down flat on the ground and let the truck go over me. And I look as the truck stopped to, to tell the dude, Hey, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? I go in the truck and there was nobody in it. The man said, Oh, thank you for helping me find my truck. I've been looking all over for it. Ever since my brother died, it likes to go on adventures on its own. 
<sighs> Ever since then, I can't look at a truck the same way. Number three. Now, this is a story about um, the time I was at Toys R Us when I was a little kid. I wanted I wanted this um, Mr. Potato Head so bad that I I stole it. I stole the toy, and I didn't feel bad about it. I was in the car and I brought it home with me, and all of a sudden the toy started to move around, and it said to me, "You stole me." And start, I thought it was supposed to talk like that, so I looked to see if there was batteries. There weren't. And it started moving, and it picked up a butter knife. And I was about freaking five to three. And this little thing scared the crap out of me. So I, so naturally, I threw him at a lamp. And I returned him to the store. Should I have done that? I don't know. Number four. Instead of top ten, guys, I think I'm just going to make these top um, top six stories. So this probably next to last story you'll get number four anyway. So I was about 15 when I started working at Toys R Us. So naturally, I would they wanted me to carry these boxes around. And they just got a crate of toys from Brazil. I forget which ones they were. We get shipments from all over the place, or at least we used to. And um, no one had told me that there would be spiders in these. So the spider jumped on my, jumped on me. And it was like a daddy long legs. For those of you who don't know what a daddy long legs is, think of, um, if you ever seen like a tall thing of juice or a container of milk, you know, like a big leader. That's how big the steady long legs was, about the size of a liter of milk or water. And it was on me, and I just, I, I yelled at the top of my lungs. I said, holy shit, fuck. And I got the crate, and I just beat the crap out of it. So then they told me to restock the toys. Now, this isn't even the scary part. The real scary part is that there was a snake in there. And the snake wasn't just any snake. It was a boa constrictor. And with the boa constrictor, there was a dead man. Turns out the man who was putting the toys in there died. Ugh. So the spiders and the snake fed upon him. So long story short, I didn't want to be the one to open the crates anymore. Number five, I'm gonna add this one little devil horns and some teeth. Number five. Okay, the reason why I did this because this is one of the one of the scariest ones. I'm saving the scariest for last. So, I was in Toys R Us, and all of a sudden, the lights went out, and I hear this over the intercom. And it's Friday the 13th, and I was just like, okay, stop. And all of a sudden, I see someone wearing a hockey mask and holding a machete with some type of bloody fluid on it, running towards me. It was Jason. I, You best believe I ran the fuck out of that store and went into my car. The next day, I found out something. They didn't see him on the cameras, and he ran right past the camera. So what does that tell you? And finally, guys, the scariest Toy Story well, not Toy Story. I'm fucking thinking of that freaking Mr. Potato Head from Toy Story. The scariest Toys R Us story that you're going to hear right now. Number six. Okay. So, I was in Toys R Us. And all of a sudden, I see this little boy and his mother ask... Well, it wasn't a little boy. I call him a little boy because he was young. A little boy, uh, a kid, and his mother asking if we had any um, child's play dolls. You know, the child's play doll, the Chucky doll. And I said, no, thank God. And the kid said, don't lie. I see him right there on the shelf behind you. And there was nothing on the shelf before, mind you. And I see this kid, this little doll, walk by me. 
Well, not walk by me. It was right by me. And it said, hi, I'm Chucky. Want to play? And I was just, like, shocked. I said, maybe there was a new shipment, but there wasn't. The only way to get this doll would be to either get to the creator of um, Child's Play, where they auctioned it off, or buy it there. They weren't, like, distributing them. I thought it might have been something that they were distributing. Again, for the new Chucky movie. But they weren't. The doll started to move, and I was like, oh, fuck. And all of a sudden, in some in one of the aisles, I hear, Kassin Gindla, give me the power, I beg of you. And I was just like, oh, fuck. Could that have been real? And I noticed that Chucky had a knife, a butter knife, because I put a butter knife in his hand just as a joke. And I heard this through the through the freaking store. Who's the fucker that gave you this fake knife? When I find him, his ass is grass. And that was the last day that I worked at Toys R Us, and now it's closing down. I bet you're wondering, why are you telling us these stories, Simple Sense? Because Toys R Us are gone. And I just thought these types of stories would help you piece together what I used to do. I've had quite a few jobs. Like recently, I became a security guard, but I ain't going back there. If you want to hear the stories of me being a security guard, leave a comment in the comment section below. See you guys. Peace out. Bye-bye. And there will be another Undertale stream today or tonight when my phone charges more. See you guys. Bye-bye.